Matthew Godinius here, and I'm going to share with you a simple but powerful tool for having all the students engaged in practicing a skill like they would if you called them up to a whiteboard, but using a digital whiteboard, even better. I'm going to show you why using Google Sheets. So here's the old school way of doing things. If you still live in the 1800s, you might do things this way. Um, you would call students up to the front of the room to show what they know to the class, and then you can analyze it together. You can use it as an example, and you can do a quick check for understanding, calling kids up to the blackboard, or if you live in the 1990s, a whiteboard with dry erase markers. However, some of these old school methods, and yes, even the 1990s is old school, um, are outlined here. One way, of course, is when we want students to practice things, we can just have them write it in a spiral notebook on paper. Um, and that's good because they're all engaged, they're all practicing, but the bad part is they don't necessarily get immediate feedback um, and they can't see each other's work. So it's really, um, they could just be practicing this, the incorrect methods over and over again. So that's one problem. It also, using the paper and pencil thing, you always have to deal with the management, the logistics of that, that can add time and stress. Like, oh, I don't have a sharpened pencil. Oh, I can't find my notebook. I don't have a blank piece of paper, things like that. But more so, even if everything works out okay, um, it's going to take some time to check their work and give them some feedback on it. So that's the biggest problem. So to give a quicker check, a bigger formative assessment, is using board language. We had students write their answers on individual whiteboards and hold them up to show the teacher. And that can be a very quick thing, so that's good. And it doesn't waste paper, so that's good. The dry erase pens can dry out or get lost, but let's say they're okay. The bigger problems are that it's difficult to read um, from the front of the room, look around and scan, especially if students are writing things like sentences or words. When it's just numbers or math problems, not a big deal. But for certain things, it's hard for the teacher to check. And the students can't easily see each other's work. So we solve that by calling students up to the front of the room, right? And they can write on an overhead projector or on a whiteboard or chalkboard to show what they know. And that's good. It's got... Um, it's got some peer pressure aspect to it. Kids want to take pride in their work and show what they know. And you can get a quick check for understanding, but it's only a small sample of students. And those one or two in front of the room are very engaged. They're being the teachers. But what about everybody else? They're doing this. Okay, they're waiting for their turn. Um, if they're great kids, they might be looking like they're paying attention and they might be being polite, maybe even listening. Um, other kids might be off task because they're bored and they're not engaged. Either way, they're not processing the information and thinking about it as thoroughly and deeply as those two in the front of the room are, or one at a time. So it's also very slow to wait for them to do their handwriting and they have to take turns. So let's go new school. Let's fix those problems with a digital whiteboard. And Google Sheets is the way that I figured out is a great way to do it. So I've opened one here and I call it comma usage and I've got various different usages of commas and sentences. And you can see the way I've set it up. This is just a Google Sheets spreadsheet in Google Drive. And I took my roster of students and put their names in the first columns so that they know where to put their answers. In my class, each student is assigned a number. So that's why I don't have any headings up at the top. Instead, I use different tabs for assigning the work they will be doing on that screen. And that's also beneficial because when you're typing sentences, they can get pretty long. If you have lots of different topics you want to go over, um, you'll start having to scroll over sideways and see more of the sheets and it can get very sort of cumbersome. So I suggest making different sheets using the tabs down at the bottom. I'll show how to do that in just a minute. You can see it's color coded and that's the feedback I gave to my students. They all were able to interact with this sheet at the exact same time. Nobody's sitting around waiting their turn or watching other people. They are both uh, producers and consumers here in the sense that they're creating their own work and they're looking at other people's work and we do it together all at the same time. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and sign in as a student here and let's go to um, the second tab here where I wanted them to use a direct address of a name at the end of a sentence. And I've got Bruce. I've changed the name here, shrunk the names too to hide protect the innocent and the guilty, I guess. These are sixth graders after all. And um, Bruce here is is Bruce Wayne, okay? So what can we say? Prepare the Batmobile, Alfred. So what happens is when I log into this site, you'll see I'm going to log in as Bruce and I'm going to type, Prepare the Batmobile, Alfred. What you'll see at the top is the student logging in. You can see all the student accounts that log in at the same time. And when they go to that sheet, you'll actually end up seeing a box show up where they, wherever they've clicked. So I'll click on my own down here by Mr. G and I can type something. I like to throw in a few little jokes myself sometimes, for examples. 
And when the student is typing, it'll start turning gray. So I'm, I'm writing that sentence, but what's cool is the students can't see each other working on this. And that's unlike a Google Doc. If you did it in a Google Doc, it'd be hard to keep things organized. But on this spreadsheet here, students will each click on one box. You'll see lots of different colored boxes and each student will have their own assigned cell to work in. Now they can accidentally mess up each other's work. So it takes a little bit of practice and guidance and instruction just like anything in class. Um, but if they follow your directions and then I give them a time limit, maybe one minute to write a sentence and I say, okay, three, two, one. Now everybody click off to the side and we'll see what we wrote. And when they click off to the side into a new cell or they press enter, then all the work will show up. So that's pretty cool. Students can work in a sort of secret hidden mode and then simultaneously we can re reveal all our work so students can't copy each other they won't have examples to look at you can get authentic uh check for what they really knew what they were doing and then what do i do is i go through and i check the work that's written there and i color code it this is a way that i can have a record of how we did we can also watch our growth over time maybe we start off with a lot of reds and then i go hmm well we clearly need more practice and i'll give it to them again and hopefully we'll get more yellows and greens Reds are sentences that are completely incorrect. In this case, they need to start the sentence with a prepositional phrase and then a comma for the independent clause at the end. Um, so I was looking for that comma after a preposition. If they got that, but they were missing a, a period, such as right here, so they had another mistake with the problem, but they did get the main idea, I color code it yellow. If they do a great job and it's pretty much perfect, we will go ahead and color those green with the fill bucket tool. So it's very quick and easy for me to give feedback. Just green, perfect, yellow needs a little work and we can talk about those. What are they missing? Why does it, why is it yellow? And then reds are if they miss the main topic altogether as this person did here because they use an exclamation at the beginning, not um, a direct address of a name. Okay, so how do you set something like this up? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and give an example here. We're starting ancient China, so this will be a perfect opportunity to do a KWL chart. What do we know? What do we um, want to know? And what have we learned at the end? And the cool thing about doing this is we have a record, so we can save it and store it and come back to it later, which is what you do with a KWL chart. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my Google Drive. So you need Google accounts for this is the one main thing. I'm gonna create a sheet, and I'll just call this, Ancient, or let's put my room number on it since this is a shared folder, China KWL. Okay, as I said, I like to organize the sheets or the topics by making new sheets for each one. So in this case, I'm gonna make a sheet for what we know. So I'm gonna click down at the bottom and rename this sheet to what we know. And I'm gonna put a roster in there in that first column. So let's put Mary is one of my students, Tyler, and no, it's not more. That'd be a weird first name. It's Jose. Okay, so that's my little roster there. You can copy and paste one if you have one somewhere else. And you can shrink to fit the names, or you can double click between these columns and it will automatically resize it to fit the name. I like it a little bit bigger than that though. And in the second column will be where they actually enter their answers. So I can spread that out and make it bigger since it's going to be a complete sentence that I want students to write about. What do they already know about China? Make a list, for example, of what they already know. Now, once you have that set up, it's very easy to add more topics that you want them to practice or more sections. I can just click on this menu, duplicate the sheet, and then it copies everything from the previous sheet, such as their names. Now this one, I wanna rename it and be what we want to know. So let's rename it. Let's delete that. What we want to know. Have to keep those capitalized. And then I'll go ahead and duplicate that again. And at the very end of our lesson, we'll re revisit this and what we learned. So now I have a basic KWL chart. I don't know what happened there. I accidentally erased Mary's name. Um, so we have a basic KWL chart, and how do I get students to actually work on that? Well, this is where Google Classroom is very handy. There are other ways to do it, but Google Classroom speeds up the process. I'll just go into my class that I'm gonna assign it for. Click the little plus to create an assignment, and I'll call it China KWL. You can set a due date. Um, I'll just set it to be done tomorrow because we'll do it in class as an introduction to our new assignment. They'll be very confused if I leave Mary, Tyler, and Jose in there, so I need to put their actual names into it. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and find it in my documents here. And I use the little drive tool to do that. Now, here's the key for doing this. Uh, normally, I assign make a copy for each student, but not for this. We want to do students can edit file because they're all going to be working on this together. We're going to be collaborating on one sheet, and that's how it works so well. Um, almost all the other work we do, it's they get their own copies of things to create and turn in. But when it's a collaborative, social, upfront, whole group kind of activity like this, we need to uh, allow students to edit the original file. And then when I assign it, it will show up. Students can simply sign into their Google Classroom. Once students have done it, they can just click on it, go into it, click on the box next to their name, and type the complete answer of what they know. And then I will guide them to type complete answers of what we want to know. And then at the end of the chapter, what we learned. So that's just one example, a few examples for grammar, for KWL. There's so many ways you could use this. Hopefully you'll give it a try. It's pretty awesome. So why is this so awesome? Well, for one thing, you don't have to worry about all the materials and the kind of logistical problems that can come with that, running out of things, students trying to find stuff that they don't have. But more importantly, it just saves time. There's no taking turns. There's no walking up to the board, hemming and hawing. And it engages all the students simultaneously because of that. They're all sitting there working. You can do a lot more this way. You can practice more skills. You can practice the same skill more frequently. And kids can see and learn from each other's work. Um, that's really beneficial, especially when you're up there giving quick feedback for all students. It's easy to read their work. It's easy to click on it and just click a button to change it to green, yellow, or red, or give some feedback, or just verbally talk about it, which I also do uh, to point out why I'm giving a yellow or a red. Um, and it keeps a permanent record for future reference. You don't even need a filing cabinet. You don't need any space at all. You don't have to go to the Xerox machine. You just have a record of what you did forever after if you want it. 